Hello folks. So today I have a very interesting story for you. So most of you self-taught developers will definitely relate to because this is the story of a self-taught developer and his name is Arvind Dev. Now I couldn't find him on direct message anywhere. Uh, so in case you are watching this video, yeah, I would say that uh, your story is really good and I'm sure that most of our viewers will definitely agree to it. Like you can also reach out to me. We can definitely talk later in case you are watching the video. Otherwise, uh, let's read the story. In this article, I will share my journey as a self-taught developer and what it takes to have a career in tech without a degree and how to overcome common developer problems like imposter syndrome and tutorial help. Like two, these two are very big problems. I'm sure like some of us are who are stuck here at some point of time or later will definitely agree with it. And I mean, uh, I still have this thing. Uh, tutorial hell, I, I believe that I have recovered from it. But in case you were stuck in any of this or both of this, definitely. Uh, don't worry about it. Just uh, keep going and keep trying to find some solutions and then you will definitely find a way out. Okay, my story. When I was in school, I used to be a very shy introvert kid and was neither good nor bad at studies. Basically, just an average performing kid at school for a very long time. Yeah, I would say most of us are kind of like that only. I was into sports, especially cricket, because it is a sport that probably every other kid had played during his or her childhood in India. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I love playing cricket so much that all my family members knew that if I was not around and they needed to find me, they would only find me in one of the cricket playgrounds near my house. Basically, the cricket grounds used to be my second home. Okay. I mean, relatable. Uh, not in case of me, but I'm sure for many of you folks. Even though I was so crazy for cricket, I never had a proper interest in pursuing a career in cricket. Other than cricket, technology was something that used to fascinate me. Interesting. I was always curious to know how websites are built. At the time, I thought it took something closer to knowing rocket science to build websites. Uh, uh, this is, um, um, I would say, um, not so common, I would say. Uh, because I was definitely interested in computer games, but uh, definitely not websites. Since I was introvert, I used to hesitate a lot asking about websites and technology to my computer science teachers. However, I, when I gathered enough courage to let them know about my curiosity for websites, they did not care to explain it to me properly, which created self-doubts about my liking for technology and made me feel not good enough about myself. Uh, yeah, sometimes maybe it is also difficult for school teachers to, uh, to explain how a website works. Because school teachers so often work in different circumstances. I mean, yeah, I'm not saying they could be knowledgeable, definitely. But sometimes uh, it's difficult for them to explain, like how we explain when we are making coding tutorials for jobs and stuff. It was one of the first instances when imposter syndrome struck at me. Oh, that hit you really early. Like when we used to do some computer stuff in our school, I never thought about imposter syndrome. I thought that, you know, I, I was some kind of a maybe computer wizard or something like that. We used to do logo and other kinds of st uh, stuff for drawing and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, those days I used to think like that only. At the time, I had no idea what imposter syndrome is and how it is natural for us humans to struggle with it. That was the day when I gave up my liking for website development. After that, my day. My only goal was to study properly in school and get a good grades to have a better future because that is what most of the schools and teachers make you believe in some parts of the country. I mean, in all parts of the country, definitely not some. Of course, we have progressed with the time, but there is still room for improvement. Marks still continue to play an important aspect in deciding the future of our children in our country. I would say it doesn't determine uh, the future in that sense uh, that much. Like these days, skills are more important, definitely. But for government exams and other kinds of, uh, you know, uh, mostly sought after jobs, you can say, uh, marks definitely play some role. I mean, a very big role, I would say. Like any student, marks made me underperform in my exams and subject to constant comparison with other top graders or in school. Yeah, yeah, this is terrible, actually. Like when you are an average kid, I mean, average with grades, you can say, not definitely not in terms of talent. So, yeah, constant comparison is difficult. Uh, but I believe uh, it's better than no comparison. Uh, I mean, it, there could be a separate discussion on this. So let's read ahead. While I got average grades in most of my schooling life, I decided to change uh, that from my 10th standard in order to get into a top tier college. I was successful in getting my grades up, 
by the time I passed out of school and in fact to get into one of the best colleges in India. However, I had to drop out of college due to some family issues. It was a very difficult decision for me because at the time I was under the impression that to succeed in the rates of life, a person needs to have a degree. While having a degree has its own importance, it is not the degree but the skill that achieves you the success. Yeah, this is definitely correct but I would say a degree is a very good rejection criteria. It may not be the selection criteria but... It is unfortunately still a rejection criteria like when there are many applicants, the recruiters may filter based on who has some degree or not. So this is definitely true. I learned that it is a skill which attracts employers and helps you move towards your goal and succeed in life. I learned various uh, different skills ranging from basic computers to basic business communication skills. Yeah, this definitely helps. But uh, it, it, you, you have to def actually go a long way with it. Like with degree... Uh, the kind of uh, filter that you get from the rejections. Uh, like doing the same thing with the skills is definitely possible, but you have to go a long way. Like I cannot comment much on this because I have a BTEC degree. So yeah, but this is what I hear from time to time. Even though I had acquired the necessary skills to get a job, I could not get a job because in most parts of the world, especially in India, in order to get a job, one needs to have experience and in order to have experience, one needs to have a job. It is a paradox that a lot of people get stuck in. Yeah, so you need experience first, then you will get a job, but other uh, without the job, how can you get the experience? So it's a chicken and egg problem and only people who get some job knows how to resolve this issue. I mean, uh, we can break it down to you in case you were searching for a job but uh, uh, you know generally chicken and egg um, problems do not have any solution but we have both chickens and eggs mm -hmm. so to break out of this paradox i decided to do an internship paid uh, which paid me well and at the same time gave me an opportunity to get experienced and learn a new skill set yeah yeah this is definitely a good way i applied to various different companies for an internship and eventually got selected to do operations internship at a well established organization i was fortunate enough to be part of a very passionate helpful bunch of people while i learned a lot from different useful things during my internship one thing that i learned changed my life entirely i learned in life you need to find something that you love to do and do it for the rest of your life this uh, line had major impact on me and i started exploring things that i have keen interest in and things that i enjoy doing which i could have a fruitful career yeah this is something which is very powerful in life you need to find something that you love to do and do it for the rest of your life so even i uh, from time to time wonder about this that in life what should i do i mean definitely i'm sure most of you have thought about this and what is it something that you would like to do for the rest of your life like i haven't found a solution for this as of now you can say it's tech but uh, these days even i am not fully sure on this anyway as i had mentioned earlier that when I was a kid, I had great interest in website development but had to give it up due to not having enough knowledge about it. During my internship, I had a computer system available to me. I decided to explore more about the website development during my free time. That is when I came across Code Academy's free web development courses, which I got started with immediately as I explored more and got to know more about free resources to learn to code. However, after finishing some courses, I was not confident enough to put my newly learned skills to practice. Then I decided to do some more courses, watch more YouTube videos, etc. to get better at web development. Even that was not useful. I never actually realized that this whole period is referred to as tutorial hell. Yeah, so it's only like watching videos more and more and more, but not able to implement what you have just watched. So it's terrible stuff. Tutorial hell is referred to as the time every new developer's journey where the developer constantly keeps jumping from tutorial to tutorial, coding along with the tutorial without any trouble, but not being able to use any of the knowledge in their personal or professional projects. Yeah, it happened with all of us. It happened with me also. Maybe it's happening with some of you also. But you will find a way out. Uh, okay. Like imposter syndrome, tutorial hell is also very common among a self-taught developer's journey. I believe imposter syndrome is common among everybody. So in order to come out of tutorial hell, I stopped watching any more tutorial and decided to use all the knowledge that I had learned from previous tutorial to build a project on my own. Since I only knew basic HTML and CSS, I started outloading minimalist looking websites like BBC News, Facebook homepage, etc. This is my version of the Facebook clone. Okay, let's see. I think this is an older one, but uh, we can see. Yeah, yeah, excellent, excellent website, I'd say. But maybe it doesn't work. Yeah. It's only a front end clone. But it's a, it's a, it's a, almost accurate. I mean, I would say it's accurate only. That I build using basic HTML and CSS. 
Uh, once I got more comfortable with my skills, I created more web such websites, which eventually helped me get another internship. But this time it was a WordPress developer intern role at an early stage startup. Okay, so you have made it using HTML and CSS. So I'm sure I can see all of the code. So body, we have header and main section container. So map left. This this part and this is only an image, I guess. Uh, yeah, image. And section has a long part, and we have created an account. Uh, it's free and always will be. Then we have a form. Yeah, yeah, interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. And uh, we have some styles here. So header, header. We have header here, and background color is something. Yeah, yeah. Very simple and interesting stuff. Okay. It was a four months internship with an opportunity to turn intern to a full time role. When I started my internship, I got to know that the company didn't have a tech team and I was the first person in their te tech team along with an experienced product manager. It was both a good experience and a bad one. I looked onto the positive side and got to work. During the internship, I had to get myself familiar with WordPress and had to brush up on my HTML and CSS even more. I was fortunate enough to get an opportunity like this where I could learn and improve my skills instantly and put it to work. Thanks to which I was able to add JavaScript under my tool belt. Uh, so when you learn by doing, you learn better. Yeah, that's definitely true. So anything that you learn, even if you watch a five minute or 10 minute tutorial, do practice it for 30 minutes. So the practice should always be higher than you're watching. So that is the only way to learn. Once my internship got over, the company offered me a full time role to work as a front end developer. I was on cloud nine and I couldn't believe that I had finally got a full time job and could now make a living out of the thing that I love to do the most. That is web development. Along with me, the company hired a new backend developer who had six months of experience and a CTO who was all more into the backend. So basically, it was Suicide Squad. And on top of that, the product manager who had the most experience on the company's product from a technical viewpoint decided to quit the company. We were an inexperienced team with almost zero knowledge of the company's product from a technical viewpoint. So when you have less experience and no experience at all, the only thing you could do is move forward in life is to be ambitious. We were all ambitious in some way or the other, and that helped us all believing in each other and getting the job done. One of the major tasks that we worked on was to create a hybrid mobile and web app for the company. We decided to build a web app and mobile app using ReactJS, and for mobile along with ReactJS, we chose to go with Cordova to act as a wrapper to the mobile app. Okay, so he uh, like your journey has already started, uh, and you have already become a developer till this one. I think most of the folks who are uh, like self-learning development and stuff, uh, I'm sure they would be very much happy if they got up to this point only. But uh, let's see what happens with you after this. So as the front-end developer, I had to learn ReactJS from scratch. Before learning ReactJS, I had to get myself familiar with at least intermediate level JavaScript because the better you are with JavaScript, the more successful you are with ReactJS. Instead of using the free course, I decided to buy this Udemy course to help me learn JavaScript. Along this course, I supplemented other YouTube tutorials on JavaScript from Traverse Media and NetNinja to solidify my learning. Okay. Learning the intermediate level of JavaScript was one of the most valuable decisions I made to accelerate my ability to work on React projects and become a scaled React developer. Once I had a good understanding of JavaScript, I learned the basics of ReactJS using this popular interactive course from Sprimba by solving various coding challenges using uh, challenges and building mini projects. The main goal was to take my React skills to the next level by building more applications, and that is exactly what I did. I started implementing all the React just knowledge into practice on the company's product project. As a result, I successfully delivered the pro project on time, all the design and business expectations. And I like how this guy is actually referring to all of the things that he used to learn uh, stuff, basically. So even I know all of these channels, and I also follow them. And they're really good channels, but it's a, it's a great to know that somebody is actually uh, citing like from whom they have learned all of these things. Like developers only steal the code from uh, Google and Stack Overflow and so many places. And uh, it really feels good when somebody is uh, basically um, giving credit where credit is due. Okay, so the main goal, uh, okay, so this, this and that. Mm -hmm. Me and my team continued to work on numerous uh, different projects and the number of projects increased and the company decided to increase the size of the tech team as well. If a couple of new interns were added to the front end and a uh, few to the back end team. As I was the most experienced front end guy, I was given an added responsibility to take care of the front end interns. Due to this pressure, the imposter syndrome kicked in. 
leaving me feeling inadequate like I don't belong there and not good enough as a developer. The reason being I was afraid to fail and that too in front of some junior developers because my goal was always to learn code websites and pursue a career doing it. I never thought that I would have to mentor and help other developers on my journey. I was never ready for such responsibility. Fear of failure means that subconsciously you would undermine your own efforts to avoid the possibility of larger failure. It made me do nothing and resisted me from moving forward. Eventually, when I explored fear of failure, I came to understand that it is part and parcel of life. If you could look around, all the successful people have experienced some kind of failure in life. Most of us will fall and stumble in life. We might make bad decisions. But very often, most valuable insights come only after failure. Accepting and learning from these insights is uh, key to succeeding in life. By accepting my knowledge gaps in website development, I was able to figure out why I was feeling inadequate and not confident enough to lead a team of developers. Okay, so this is also one powerful line. Most of us will fall and stumble in life. We might make bad decisions, but very often most valuable insights come only after failure. So that's why I believe it's Zuck. Mark Zuckerberg used to say this, that fail and fail fast. Yeah, even I agree with this. And uh, the sooner you fail, the better you can adapt and improvise and overcome and basically, basically do better. After realization, I quickly managed to fill out my knowledge gaps by solidifying my skills, which helped me overcome my imposter syndrome and lead a team of junior developers in a better way. Over the years, I, a lot of people left the organization. I remained constant and due to my consistency and hard work, I was promoted to senior front-end role. After spending three years at a startup, I left the company and now I am working as a full-stack engineer at, at Spark. Thanks for reading. Hopefully, my sharing my experience will help you keep moving forward and not getting discouraged when things are not going in your way. And yeah, that is the exact reason I decided to review this article because this article is very simple and very generic, but it gives a lot of good lessons, especially for self-taught developers. And that also includes me. So yeah, that's it for this folks. And let me know in the comment section below how you like this article. And you can also basically comment and uh, like share your opinions with the, with the writer. I don't know him, but I'm sure he will be happy if you leave some comment out there also. So yeah, that's it for this folks. And I will see you once again with something interesting. So yeah, bye-bye.